So, uh, what we're going to do here is uh, have a look at creating a database using RM Light, and then we're going to go ahead and do CRUD, which is create, read, update, and delete. So, I've created a new WPF application, and uh, what I want to do is create a database which we're going to call test.db3, and we're going to then create a table for our customers. And we're going to track the customer ID, which will be order incrementing and uh, also not null. And we're also going to then also create uh, last name and first name for storing the customer and also their email address. Okay. So the first thing I need to do before I actually go ahead and create uh, any of the code for reading the database is I need to actually define the database and its tables. So I'm going to start by creating the class for the customer. So I'm going to right click on my project and add class. And this is where we're going to define each of the tables that we need. One class per table. Since this demo is only going to have the one table, we'll just do that. So we can call it customer. And then we have to define the fields that make up that table. So each one of those fields will be a property. So I'm going to use prop and press tab twice. The first one's going to be the customer ID because we're going to have a unique number for each customer. Then we'll have the details of the customers like their last name, their first name, and their email address. So we'd obviously including any other details that we want for that particular table. So there's the properties, but I also need to tell our uh, project that these are going to be working with RRM Lite. Now at the moment I haven't actually got any references to RRM Lite at all, so my project doesn't know what RRM Lite is. So at this point I'm going to go across and add references and choose NuGet packages. And I'm going to have a look for ORM Lite. ORM Lite can work with a variety of databases. In this demo, we're going to be working with SQLite, so I'll put that in as part of the search term as well. And we'll get a few answers back. The one we're looking for is the version of ORM Lite SQLite Windows. Works with x86 and x64. So I'll go ahead and install that. good thing about this package is it also installs all the SQLite libraries that we need as well. So once we've installed this we'll be good to go. Okay, it's installed successfully. We'll have a look at the references now. We can see we've got the service stack and we've also got the system.data SQLite. So now that our project knows about ORM Lite, I can go ahead and over here in the class file describe that first field as being the primary key. To do that I need to add an attribute which starts with square brackets and I'll type in primary key. I know which one it is because I've been there before but if you didn't know you could go to the GitHub page for the project and there's some source code examples there and, and what sort of things you can do. Once I click on the primary key and look at the drop down there, we can see that I can add a using statement for data annotations. And now my primary key is recognised. I'm also going to say that this one is auto incrementing because we want the customer ID to be a unique number for each customer we add to the database. We can add other attributes here for last name, first name and email, but we'll leave it just at that. And that's probably what you will need for most of your tables, unless you're going to be creating the custom, uh, creating uh, something like a composite key for each table. I'll save the changes. So at this point, our project knows about ORM Lite, and it also knows about uh, the table that we'd like to be working with. If we had other tables, we'd have those now. The next step is we need to talk about how to make the connection to our database. So I'm going to set up a few buttons here on my WPF project just to go through some of the code. Um, 
So the first one's going to be called Button Test, and I'm going to use that to actually uh, create the database itself, which we can do in code. And then below that, I'm going to put a button for each of the uh, well for each of the operations we want to do on our data. So that will be create, update, sorry, create, read, update, and delete. Okay, so we'll start off by actually looking at the codes required to connect to our database and create it if it doesn't already exist. First thing I want to do is create a connection to the database and I want that connection to be closed when we've finished doing this operation. So the easiest way for me to do that is simply to use a using clause and I'm going to say that we're going to have a variable called db which is going to be our database obviously and we're going to connect to db factory no we're not edit there let's try that again three two one so before we can go ahead and actually connect create the connection to our database we first have to define what the connection string will be and i'm going to do that up the top here so that's available to all our operations at this level so we'll just comment there. We're going to put a create a connection to the database. Normally in .NET, if you're creating connections, you would use the string builder. But for this demo, I'm just going to keep it simple and just um, put the connection actually as a string. So first of all, we have to create the ORM light connection factory. That's not initially recognized, but if we do the drop down here, we can add the using clause for the service stack. And then, of course, what we want to call it, so we'll call it DB Factory. And now we're going to specify two pieces of information. First one is going to be what the path and the name of the database is. I'm just going to elect to put the name of the database, which means the database will be created in the same location as where my code is executed from. That's probably not a good convention if you're going to be doing production code, where you'd want to actually put the database in either a network path or perhaps uh, in one of these special environment folders like uh, app data and so on. But for this demo, we'll leave it with the actual project. And the second part I need to say is what dialect of SQL that we're going to be using because SQLite supports a variety of different databases natively. So in this case we're going to say uh, oops, that it's using SQLite. I don't know why I put that dot there. Okay. So whenever we want to refer to our database and open a connection, we'll be referring to DB Factory. All right, back to our test. Click event. We'll add the using in there. And now we'd like to open a connection to our database. We're going to call our connection to it DB. And we're going to say that we want to open the connection that we defined earlier on up here. So it will now open the database if it exists so we can then go ahead and perform our CRUD operations. If the, if the database doesn't exist, this will actually be enough to create it. It won't, however, create the tables. So we also need to put some code in to create tables. Now they may already exist, so we need to be a little bit careful about how we do that. Fortunately, ORM Lite has a way of allowing us to check and at the same time create them if they don't exist and that is create table if not exists. We need to specify that the table that we're interested in creating, which in case is customer. 
And what will happen is when we run our code, is it'll open a connection to the database. If the database doesn't exist, it will be created for us. And then it will check to see if the customer table exists. And if that doesn't exist, it will also be created for us with that code. Finally, just because this is a bit of test code, we want to see if everything's worked, we'll just put a quick uh, acknowledgement on the screen with a message box to say that it's done. Okay, so at this point I've got enough code to be able to actually go ahead and test my project, so we'll go ahead and run it. And we're going to get an error, and that's because when we installed ORM Lite, there was in fact an additional library that wasn't installed by NuGet. We have a look down here at the error, we can see it says uh, that it cannot resolve a dependency to an assembly system runtime serialization. If we have a look at our list of references, we can see that that's in fact missing. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that by adding that runtime library. So right click on references and add reference. And under the framework, I'm going to do a search and look down the list and there it is there, so we'll select it and say OK. That'll add the missing library and now we'll try and run it again. It should work this time. OK, so our project's up and going, we'll click on test. We get our message box to say that it's finished. And what we'll do now is have a look and see what uh, that code has created for us. So I'm going to right click on my project and open that folder in File Explorer. Here's my project, here's the bin folder. Debug because we ran this program in debug mode. And if we have a look down there, there's test.db3 which is the database I specified in the connection over here. Let's open up and have a look inside. Um, we can see we have a customer table and it has four fields and they're the four fields that we specified. So it all looks good. So at this point we're now ready to go ahead and start doing our CRUD operations. So the first one we're going to do is create a record. So I'll double click on create and again just like we did here we have to establish a connection to our database so that will be the using clause again. And then at this point we can go ahead and actually create our customer. Now there's a variety of ways we can do this depending on what coding conventions we'd like to use, but essentially it will come down to the same key steps. We want to create a new customer, so we mention, we actually uh, reference the class customer, then whatever we want to call our instance of it, so I'll call it my customer, and then we create a new one. Finally we have to specify the data we'd like to put in the new customer, so I'm going to specify that the first name equals Dan and the last name Stacy and email equals Dan at tafe.com Right, now I don't have to specify the customer ID because we said that was going to be uh, order and commenting and created for us. That's our new customer. But what we've got at the moment is a copy of our new customer memory. We haven't actually committed that to the database. So the next line is going to go ahead and do that with an insert. And we're just going to simply specify our customer. Finally, again, I'll put a message on there just to let us know that it's done. All right, so now we'll save our changes and run the program. Click on Create. It says it's done. Let's go and have a look at our database. Wrong one, sorry. Demo 5 here. What am I thinking about? Oh, yeah. Let's have a look at our test database. 
And here's our first record for customer. And our details have gone in there. So it's all good. Let's go ahead now and look at the second operation we're going to be doing, which is a read. Again, just like we did with the first and second examples there, we're going to have to first of all establish a connection to the database. Which this code you'll find won't change in any of these operations I'm doing. And then we're ready to read the database. We've got a couple of choices how we go about doing this. Let's say, for example, we know what the employee, uh, the uh, customer ID is. So we want to go and find the exact customer. We can do that. First of all, we'll create our container to re to store the information retrieved from the database. So we're creating a new instance of customer there. And then we're going to do searching on single by ID, which is simply saying that we expect to return one record and we know what the ID should be. So in brackets we can say that we're looking for record one. Now of course we also have to specify what table because we could have multiple tables. So here I'm going to say this is coming from the customer table. At this point we should have successfully retrieved our customer. So let's see if we can get back some information about that customer. So let's um, show their first name on the screen. Run that. And we get back Dan. Now all your database code should really be wrapped in a try exception. Uh, I'm not doing that for this particular demo, just for the case of speed, but uh, you would normally do that. But there is one other scenario, and that is that we weren't successful at retrieving customer. So let's say, for example, we're looking for customer 99, which we know doesn't exist in our database because we haven't created him yet. If we then attempt to read that record, we'll find our program will crash because we get a null reference exception, which makes sense. There is no customer 99 to retrieve. So before we go displaying details about that customer, we really should check to see that in fact we were successful in getting them back. So I'm going to put an if statement in here and I'm going to check if my customer is not equal to null. Of course, if it is null, it's good practice to let the user know that as well. So let's put that in there. So we'll try running that now. And we get customer not found. Let's uh, put it back to record one so we can test the other side of our if statement there. And we get back the customer's name. There are quite a few ways that you can query your database to retrieve information about a particular customer. So I'm not going to take you through every possible variation of that, but there are very common scenarios where you don't want to retrieve by the actual unique ID, but you want to retrieve it by some piece of information you know about them. So let's take the scenario that you'd like to try and retrieve the customer by their first name. So in this scenario we're going to write a query using select and we're going to be querying the customer table and we're going to be using a Lambda expression to actually look at the customer table and see if we can retrieve a customer by their first name. Now at this point you've got a few options. You could, If you knew what the exact name was in the database you could just simply say dot equals and that would look for an exact match. Or if you're not sure if the customer's name is Dan or Daniel or Danny or whatever, you could do something like starts with. If you're not sure if it's 
the beginning of a spelling of a name, but you know the ends, you could always do the ends with, or possibly even do contains. So you'll have to make a decision here which one is the appropriate choice for the query. I'm going to go ahead with um, equals because I'm pretty confident I know what is stored in the database here. And then I'm going to do a search on Dan. Now potentially our database has more than one Dan as a customer and as it stands at the moment our query could bring back more than one result and of course we're only geared up to actually accept one result over here because we've only created an instance of one customer. So what I'm going to put on the end of my query is first or default which is essentially going to say that if it finds more than one Dan it will just return the first one that it comes across. Now like the previous example you should check to see whether in fact you got a result and then decide what you want to do. So I'm just going to copy and paste that code underneath my second query here and just see what we get for a result. Uh, let's comment out the first one because we don't want to run that. Oops, sorry, that should be customer 2. get back Dan. Let's have a look at uh, a couple of things to do with this first. Let's see if we went looking for Dan with a lowercase d. You'll see it no longer gets a match because it is looking for an exact match when we do equals. So just be aware of that. All good. And if we just run it looking for uppercase d we'll get a match. Alright, so let's see if we can update that customer. So we're going to change the first name from Dan to Daniel. So to do that, we're going to go into the update click event. And again, we'll establish a connection to our database. To do an update, we first of all have to retrieve the record that we want to update. So save a bit of time. I'm just going to copy and paste our code from the previous demo to read in the record and then inside the if statement here where we were successful at retrieving Dan we'll go ahead and change the customer's details. So in this case it'll be my customer 2 first name will now equal Daniel. Now that we've made the change, and that was the only change we needed, we're good to go. If you want to also, for example, change the email address, perhaps that should have also been Daniel. We could do that as well. Here are the two changes we want to make. So now we want to save those changes back to the database. We're going to do a database save, and then just specify the customer, like so. Let's put again just a message at the bottom to tell us that it's now finished that operation. Obviously, in a real a real project, you would do something a little bit more meaningful than that, but that's just to give us some sort of visual cue. So, if all goes well, when I click on update, we should see the done message, which we do. And I think what we'll do now is pop over to the database and open it up here and have a browse of it. And um, we can see that the first name's been updated and it has the email. Although I've got my email address for my name, which is not good. So what did we do there? Let's have a look. I probably made a typo. I did. That should have been email. So let's try running that again. Okay, I'll have to edit this bit. We'll edit that later. Um, right. 
So now I've updated my customer, I've got the last operation to do, which is delete. So we'll go ahead and do that. Again, we have to open a connection. And similar to what we did in update, we need to first of all retrieve the customer that we're interested in before we can go ahead and delete them. So I'm going to go back to my previous code and I'm going to, for a change, use the first example we used for the read. I'll pop that in there, I'll comment it. And if we're successful at retrieving customer ID 1, what I'm going to do then is perform a delete, which is very simple to do in RM Light. It's simply db.delete and then the customer that you had just retrieved. Okay. We'll just do a double check before we start. We're going to look at the database at the moment. You can see I do have a customer one. So let's go ahead and run our program and try and delete that person. Says so done. Let's go back and open up our database again. Have a look at the customer table and we can see we have deleted that customer's record. And that is your basic crate read, update and delete.